Oi, every week I sift through the hundreds of brand new papers that come out in AI, and whichever ones have the coolest titles, I grab and I put them in a list for this video. If you'd prefer to read through that list rather than listen to me talk, you can scroll down to this description and check out all these timestamps with links to the papers. During this video though, I'm going to trim that list down even further to the 10 to 15 or so papers that I actually plan to read this week, which you can find over in my weekly newsletter on Substack, also in podcast listenable form. But if you prefer to read through one of those lists rather than hearing me talk, feel free to turn the video down all the way down to mute and leave it playing in the background. Please, 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 that would help me out a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Before we start, remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, all the YouTube things, join the Discord server, follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, support me either through Patreon or YouTube. For as low as $1 per month, you can get early access to my videos, or for a one-time payment, hit my Venmo. And if you'd like to borrow my brain for an hour or two, book a consultation call. All links are over on my link tree. Let's get started. A mathematical framework of intelligence and consciousness based on Riemannian geometry. This one came up last week's video and I chose not to look into it because it seems like just a whole lot and I was not excited about it. But I did have one viewer who kept sending it to me and insisting I should read it. Um, and despite my better judgment with people who insist a lot, I'm going to go ahead and trust them and I will at least give it a try. So let's go ahead and add this to this week's list of papers to actually be attempted to be read slash the newsletter. Retrieval attention, accelerating long context LLM inference via vector retrieval. At least off the title, it sounds a lot like my month or so ago human-like human, human -like LLM memory video. Training free approach. Both accelerates attention computation and reduces GPU memory consumption. Uses approximate nearest neighbor search indexes for KV vectors in CPU memory. Retrieves the most relevant ones, the vector search during generation. Designs an attention aware vector search algorithm that can adapt to the distribution of query vectors, which apparently the distribution of query vectors versus key vectors is an issue for traditional ANNS search. Only needs access to 1-3% to of data while maintaining high model accuracy. Only needs a single 24 gigabyte GPU for serving 128,000 tokens and LMs 8 billion parameters. Cool, this technique does not sound as interesting as the one that I had that video on forever ago though. It sounds like just a pretty simple similarity search with um, some extra bells and whistles to make it work. Uh, so I'm going to say no, not for me. Causal language modeling can elicit search and reasoning capabilities on logic puzzles. Study of causal language modeling can learn a complex task like solving Sudoku puzzles, which should be difficult for a transformer, I would imagine, at least in a single pass if it can't do chain of thought type reasoning. Sometimes the application of a strategy only results in thinning down the possible values in a cell rather than concluding the exact value of the cell. In such cases, multiple strategies are applied one after another to fill a single cell. Models trained on the synthetic task can indeed learn to solve Sudokus because they have the actual ability to check tryouts and then give up on certain scenarios on certain values of a cell. 94% correct. Keyword here, when trained on logical sequences of steps taken by a solver. Like, so yeah, there's just a huge issue right now with transformers and explicit prediction where you can't just give them the final answer and hope that they figure it out. Um, they are only able to learn parallelizable tasks, but if you actually give them the full reasoning change, reasoning tokens, as we know, then suddenly that's enough information for them to actually work with. Now they can effectively work as a recurrent system given their longer um, chain of thought reasoning. All right, not worth reading for me, but cool to confirm. Schrodinger's memory, large language models. What is the underlying mechanism of LLM memory? I assume they mean parametric memory. They use the universal approximation theorem to explain the memory mechanism in LLMs. Argue that LLM memory operates like Schrodinger's memory, meaning that it only becomes observable when a specific memory is queried. We can only determine if the model retains a memory based on its output in response to the query, otherwise it remains indeterminate. We expand this concept by comparing the memory capabilities of the human brain and LLMs, highlighting the similarities and differences in their operational mechanisms. I'm at the point where if they had some cool graphs or something for a thumbnail, I would do it, but that's a no. Rediscovering the latent dimensions of personality with large language models as trait descriptors. So they're comparing against the uh, previous statistical derivation methods of the Big Five model. If you don't know, um, I used to be a psychology major. Um, basically, Big Five personality traits, what it means is 
Whereas most tests you've probably taken on like Myers Briggs or whatever shitty personality tests are just tend to be some old white dude from the 50s or something sat down and made up the traits and made up the test for them based off of just his own sense of arrogance. Um, what Big Five did was they had like a ton of people, like hundreds or something, write down each dozens of questions of personality. They just told the people, hey, just whatever personality is, like write down questions that you think have to do with personality, right? And then they took those thousands of questions they now have and they asked thousands of people subsets of those thousands of questions. I was like, you can't have them ask for all of them, but they had thousands of people answer these questions, right? And then they just did a statistical um, grouping to find what the actual clusters were in terms of what questions seem to be the exact same question. Like, are you a happy person and do you smile a lot? Probably have a high correlation. Any questions with a high correlation were boiled down into like being labeled as the same thing. And they said, okay, once we start doing this grouping of how many actual questions statistically grouped together, what are we left with? And they found that there were five major groups, aka the big five personality traits. Uh, each of those major groups did have two little subsplits that were a little bit shown, and the five major groups debatably had two overarching groups, but basically the most important level to look at, the most like clear statistical level, was big five, uh, openness, which is kind of like creativity, like um, curiosity, and then the next second one was conscientiousness, kind of like hard work, but also like entangled with this idea of like disgust, extroversion, you know that one agreeableness just are you willing to argue with someone or do you feel the need to appease people constantly and neuroticism meaning are you sensitive to negative emotions or do you tend to to worry that kind of thing or are you very level-headed and insensitive to um, stressful situations and that's what was found in humans statistically um, that was in white countries um, or most white countries you find big five uh, when you start doing cross-culturally uh I think it was Italy maybe was the first one, but there's plenty of countries where you actually find six, Hexaco, which um, separates out the agreeableness one into actual agreeableness and a kind of honesty slash humility trait. So it's actually your culture does a bit affect what the number of personality traits there are. Anyways, sorry, I love my ramble about stuff I used to be super into. I used to be so into that stuff. Anyways... They hypothesize that LLMs implicitly encode notions of personality when modeling next token responses. They introduce a novel approach that uncovers latent personality dimensions in LLMs by applying singular value decomposition to the log probs of trait descriptive adjectives. Experiments show that LLMs rediscover core personality traits such as extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness without relying on direct questionnaire inputs, with the top five factors corresponding to big five traits, explaining 74% of the variance in the latent space. That's pretty damn good. Moreover, we use those derived principal components to assess personality along the big five dimensions and achieve improvements in average personality prediction accuracy of up to 5% over fine-tuned models, up to 21% over direct LLM-based scoring techniques. This is cool. I'm downloading this one. Hell yeah. Expect a video on this. I'm excited about this one. This is like Mary is an old love of mine. I could totally get into that as a research area of just marrying other concepts with AI stuff. That'd be super cool. GFlowNet pre-training with inexpensive rewards. GFlow nets are the recent-ish, like maybe a year or two ago, creation of one of the big names in the field, and they swear by it. It'll be the next thing or something. Oh, Bengio, that's who it is. Yeah, yeah. Emmanuel Bengio is. Isn't he the brother of Yashua Bengio? I forget. Um, but I've not seen much research on them. It seems. I wonder if there's just no tools, no easy tools for it, or what. They're using the word molecular here. Do they mean actual molecules? They're referring to the composition of the actual model. I'm not sure. Yeah, chemical. This is a chemical paper, it looks like. I don't care about chemistry. Mindscape study. Integrate, integrating LLM in behavioral sensing for personalized AI-driven journaling experiences. Uh, this, I think, was supposed to be sent to somebody else. I don't think I was considering reading this one, actually. Language models grok to copy. Learn to copy. Propose a novel perspective that transformer-based language models develop copying abilities similarly to grokking, which refers to setogenization on the test set along after the model fit in the training set. So when they say novel perspective, they might just not be aware, but it's been well hypothesized so far that individual tasks within LLMs do actually exhibit grokking behavior, or at least sometimes do based on hyperparameters, but that um, the reason you don't see it is because 
there's gazillions of tasks that need to be done by an LLM, so they all get averaged out in the actual loss curve, and you end up with a smooth loss curve, which actually explains sudden emergence of, of abilities, why they actually emerge so suddenly. Yeah, they do find that pre-training loss decreases while context copying ability initially lags and abruptly saturates. That makes sense. That's grokking. Speed of developing copying ability is independent of the number of tokens trained, similarly to how grokking speed is unaffected by data set size as long as the data distribution is preserved. Yep. Induction heads, the attention heads responsible for copying, form from shallow to deep layers during training, mirroring the developments of circuits and deeper layers during grokking. I was not aware we have found a deep misconnection from devel circuit development. I was not aware of that. That's new to me. Um, because this is confirmation of that already hypothesized thing, I'm tempted to download. Do they have any actual good charts or graphs or anything? Well, they chose unique colors, I guess. It's very short, and I appreciate the confirmation this is happening. I think getting a word out about that is probably worth it. So I think I will download, and this will be on the newsletter. Auto regressive plus chain of thought is approximately the same as recurrence. Yep. Recurrence's role in a language model's comp computability and the revisit of recurrent transformer. Um, the, I think someone recently came out with a proof. I heard about it. Maybe it's in this week's stack of papers, maybe. Uh, a proof that's combining transformers with chain of thoughts if trained correctly, of course, which is a hard thing. That's a harder thing to train. Um, they do actually recover all of the recurrence uh, models abilities. Yeah. So the move away from recurrent structures places transformer model at the lower end of Chomsky's computational hierarchy. That's a whole, um, I believe they're not referring to Noam Chomsky. I believe they're referring to an actual computer science thing that talks about like the difference in problem types that are parallelizable versus recurrence. Parallelizable are a subset of recurrence and that transformers with regular next token prediction can only do parallelizable tasks, therefore are restricted in their actual ability to do things. But but the idea here being that when you add in chain of thought, when you actually have reasoning tokens, that you end up doing recurrence across the actual autoregressive sequence and you do recover that ability. This would be why regular transformer-based next generation models face considerable difficulties in tasks like counting, string reversal, multiplication, etc. Shed light on how chain of thought approach can mimic recurrent computation and act as a bridge between autoregression and recurrence in the context of language models. They also revisit recurrence-based transform model designs, focusing on their computational abilities through a proposed concept of recurrent completeness, and identify key theoretical limitations in models like linear transformer and RWKV. I'm good someone's found some limitations of that, because RWKV just sounds so promising when you first hear about it, but just doesn't actually perform that well, it seems, at large scales. Yeah, I'm going to download this one. So be on the lookout for this in the weekly Substack newsletter as well. Multimodal speech transformer decoders. When do multiple modalities improve accuracy? We investigate the effects of multiple modalities on recognition accuracy on both synthetic and real-world data sets. Does suggest that more modalities can increase accuracy. Images as a supplementary modality for speech recognition provide the greatest benefit at moderate noise levels. That makes sense. Whenever like your one modality is kind of noisy, kind of hard to distinguish, then it's beneficial to have the other modality. Performance improves on both synthetic and real-world data sets when the most relevant visual information is filtered as a pre-processing step. That makes sense, too. I don't think I want to read this one. No, I'm good. Synthetic human memories. AI-edited images and videos can implant false memories and distort recollection. Hell yeah. This is terrible. Participants viewed original images, completed a filler task, then saw stimuli corresponding to their assigned condition. Unedited images, AI-edited images, AI-generated videos, or AI-generated videos of AI-edited images. AI-edited visuals significantly increase false recollections. AI-generated videos of AI-edited images have the strongest effect. See, this isn't surprising because human memory is already so dog shit, like to the point where it should not be trusted in a court of law. If you weren't already aware, that's, that's a thing. Is, uh, human memory is absolutely terrible. It's, it's useless. Um, if I were ever on a jury, uh, on jury duty, I would straight up not listen to any humans involved. I would only look at video evidence and fingerprints or whatever the hell, and, uh, genetic, whatever, biology, like uh, leftover DNA stuff. Like I refuse to listen to human memory. It's so terrible. Personally, this is a fun thing I do because it's so bad and I know it's so bad and I just don't care. I like to shape my memory. I like to like shape the past. Um, whenever I have um, to recollect something that's like a story of like something that happened in the past with like friends or something, um, 
I'm pretty reasonable at recognizing how bad it is. Not like not good at it, but like better than the average human is. Everyone else assumes they're confident. Um, I just willingly, purposefully fill in false information. That's just more fun. Like as far as I'm concerned, when I'm 80, I want to have some dope memories. I don't care if they're true. It doesn't matter because they won't be true anyways. They won't be accurate anyways. I want to have some amazing memories. Just inflate them. I don't care. Like make them seem more fun more impressive, whatever it is, more funny, that kind of thing. Confidence in false memories was also highest for this condition. That's interesting. I have not looked into confidence in memories. I wonder if there's some kind of like subconscious thing, um, like overcompensating or something. I have no idea. I'm not going to actually read this, but love to see it. Love to see how terrifying the world will be in a few years. Your weak LLM is secretly as str a strong teacher for alignment. Empirical findings demonstrate that weak LLMs can provide feedback that rivals or even exceeds that of fully human annotated data. Study indicates a minimized impact of model size and feedback efficacy, shedding light on a scalable and sustainable alignment strategy. How does this work? Honestly, I just, I can't bring myself to actually read this. Um, could be very cool if it actually is what it says, but not for me. Is what you say the same as what you want? Teaching humans to articulate requirements for LLMs. We argue that clearly conveying customized requirements remains a human-centric challenge. We introduce requirement-oriented prompt engineering, a paradigm rope. Oh, that's unfortunate. A paradigm that focuses on human attention, on generating clear, complete requirements during prompting. Study with 30 novices. We show that requirement-focused training doubles novices' prompting performance, significantly outperforming conventional prompt engineering training and prompt optimization. Not a prompt engineering person. This is something I've been saying, though, is like, I think a lot of prompt engineering is like these oh specific things you can do that like made a lot more sense back before RLHF and everything. But end of the day, as these systems get better, prompt engineering per se will become less useful. And what we actually need is people to get better at conveying what they need, which if you haven't noticed in your own job or whatever, is already an issue from human to human, like the number of times back when I worked a regular nine to five consulting gig uh, that someone would send me something, I'd be like, you need to get better at asking for what you want clearly because there's multiple things I could think here. And don't get me wrong, the most time it's like, oh, well, I'll figure it out. It'll be good enough and I'll just like choose stuff or whatever it is. But like, there's a lot of cases where people are just not good at communicating. And my hope, my hope is that one of the unforeseen consequences of LLMs with young kids who will actually like be uh, fully into using ChatGPT style systems the same way that like Gen Z was fully into using the internet and whatnot, and therefore was a lot better at it than previous generations. Uh, my hope is that communication, people will actually get better at communicating uh, in certain contexts than um, previous generations were, especially like boomers kind of thing. Oh my God, they're so dumb. No offense to any of my boomer audience, uh, but whatever. Anyways, cool. Good to see. I'm not going to read it. Expediting, elevating large language model reasoning via hidden chain of thought decoding. This just sounds like O1 preview, but without the um, reinforcement learning part, or I guess that means it sounds, unless they're doing also huge numbers of inference in parallel, it also actually just sounds more like what um, Claude already does in the background, I believe. Method introduces an auxiliary chain of thought model that learns to generate and compress the full thought process into a compact special token representation, semantically aligned with the original chain of thought output. This compressed representation is then integrated into the input of the hidden chain of thought model. Two-stage procedure. So this is definitely not what Claude was doing. First, chain of thought model is optimized to generate this compressed token representation aligned with the ground truth chain of thought outputs using contrastive loss, subsequently with chain of thought model parameters frozen. The chain of thought model is fine-tuned to generate accurate subsequent predictions conditioned on the prefix instruction and the compressed chain of thought representation from chain of thought model. I can't say I'd care about this. When context leads, but parametric memory follows in large language models. Investigates how nine widely used LLMs allocate knowledge between local context and global parameters when answering open-ended questions in knowledge-consistent scenarios, novel data set, Systematically vary context sizes to analyze how LLMs prioritize and utilize the provided information and the parametric knowledge in knowledge consistent scenarios. Study tendency to hallucinate under varying context sizes. Consistent patterns across models. Consistent reliance on contextual around 70% and parametric around 30% knowledge. 
and a decrease in hallucinations with increasing context. Cool. Interesting that we have actual numbers for the percent of contextual versus percent of parametric knowledge. That's very interesting. 70 to 30? Weird. What is the role of small models in the LLM era? A survey. From two key perspectives, collaboration and competition. I don't think I care about this. Towards time series reasoning with LLMs. LLMs have been dope for multimodal LLMs have been dope for domains like vision, but we have not yet seen this broad success for time series. Very few works have shown how an LLM can be used for time series reasoning in natural language. Propose a novel multimodal time series LLM approach that learns generalized information across various domains with powerful zero-shot performance. Train a lightweight time series encoder on top of an LLM to directly extract time series information. Fine-tune our model with chain of thought augmented time series tasks to encourage the model to generate reasoning paths. Show that our model learns latent representation that reflects specific time series features like slope and frequency, as well as outperforming GPT-40 on a set of zero-shot reasoning tasks in a variety of domains. Eh. AI suggestions homogenize writing towards Western styles and diminish cultural nuances. This is a big issue. It's kind of just inevitable with the fact of like the way the data works, the way the data is set up such that like the English language has dominated the world the past hundred years or so, or 250 or something, to where like other countries, even if in casual conversation, they use their own native language. When you look at like business documents or whatever, they're all using English or like some percent of the time, right? Uh, it's just the unfortunate truth of the data and the fact that it might further encourage like a, in a feedback loop, these, this already unfortunate truth is even more unfortunate, of course. I gotta stop using that word. This is unfortunate, even worse. I gotta stop using that word. This is even worse. Uh, Cross-cultural control experiment with 118 participants from India and United States who completed, completed culturally grounded writing tasks with and without AI suggestions. Analysis reveals that AI provided greater efficiency gains for Americans compared to Indians. Um, I wonder if you separate Indians by English fluency, if like if that still maintains or if it's based off of just difficulty with English. AI suggestions led Indian participants to adopt Western writing styles, altering not just what was written, but also how it is written. Findings show Western-centric AI models homogenize writing towards Western norms, diminishing nuances that differentiate cultural expression. Yeah, for sure, huge issue. One other thing I wanted to point out is now that people are kind of on the lookout for LLM writing, this funny thing happens, unfortunate again, the, um, where they really overestimate their ability to tell when something was LLM written. And what actually ends up happening is like on a job application, whatever it is, they end up discriminating against English as a second language people. Um, they mistake multilingual people for AIs, and then they overconfidently rate AI writing as just someone who's smart. Um, because, let's face it, uh, GPT-4 is a better writer than most random English speakers in America you find on the street. That That's just a fact at this point. Um, it's, it is better at writing. Uh, so please do not assume you can spot AI writing unless it uses the word delve. If it uses the word delve, then it is an open AI model. <laughs> uh, other than that though, yeah, you're probably just, um, being accidentally racist or whatever it is, or linguist or whatever it is towards someone who, uh, uses English as a second language. LPT++ Efficient Training on Mixture of Long-Tailed Experts. Comprehensive framework for long tail classification that combines parameter efficient fine tuning with learnable model ensemble. Enhances frozen vision transformers through the integration of three core components. I don't know that I care about long tail classification per se, right? I guess that is those count as rare tokens in the actual LLMs, maybe. Nah, I'm gonna skip. Linear recency bias during training improves transformers fit to reading times. Ooh, recent psycholinguistic research has compared human reading times to surprisal estimates from language models. To study the factors to shaping human sentence processing difficulty. Strong fit between surprisal values from transformers and reading times in humans. However, standard transformers work with a loss of representation of the entire previous linguistic context, unlike models of human language processing that include memory decay. To bridge this gap, this paper evaluates a modification of the transformer lang model that uses alibi, a, recent, a recency bias added to attention scores. Surprisal estimates with alibi show an improved fit to human reading times compared to standard transformer baselines. Subsequent analysis of attention heads suggests that alibi's mixture of slopes, which determine the rate of memory decay in each attention head, may play a role in the improvement by helping models of alibi to track different kinds of linguistic dependencies. This is super cool. I love examples 
of LLMs teaching us, or AI in general, teaching us about biology about or humans, right? That's super cool. Um, I hope they have some good graphs and things for a thumbnail, some good images, do they? Unfortunately, no, but uh, topic-wise, it is cool and weird, so I am going to download it still. Self-evolutionary large language models through uncertainty enhanced preference optimization. Framework to make LLM self-evolve with rebel feedback. Key idea is mitigating the noisy preference that had arrived from the current policy and reward models by performing pairwise uncertainty estimation and judiciously reliable feedback sampling. Voice crack. Introduce an estimator model which incorporates Monte Carlo dropout and Bayesian neural network to perform uncertainty estimation for the preference data derived from the LLM policy. Compared to existing methods that directly filter generated responses based on the reward score, the estimator focuses on the model uncertainty in a pairwise manner and effectively bypasses the confirmation bias problem of the reward model. Also propose an uncertainty enhanced self-evolution algorithm to improve the robustness of preference optimization and encourage the LLM to generate responses with both high reward and certainty. Framework substantially uh, alleviates the noisy problem and improves performance and iterative preference optimization. This is cool. Uh, I've not looked much into uh, RL methods to actually improve accuracy of the model at all. And I guess it is a little bit in line with the whole this new O1 preview thing we have going on with OpenAI recently. Um, I'm kind of curious. I don't love reading any kind of RL papers. It's just not my cup of tea, although I'm going to have to at some point. Yeah, I'm going to regret it later, I think. But let's go ahead and download. Adaptive large language models by layer-wise attention shortcuts. Introduce adaptive computations for LLM like setups which allow the final layer to attend to all of the intermediate layers as it deems fit through the attention mechanism, thereby introducing computational attention shortcuts. These shortcuts can thus make the architecture depth and context adaptive. We showcase four different data sets, namely acoustic tokens, natural languages and ballot music, chief superior performance for GPT-like architecture. Give evidence via attention maps that the models learn complex dependencies across layers that are adaptive in context and depth depending on the input tokens. So typical decoder transformer, final layer developing attention shortcuts. Interesting. I wonder what it's actually doing. Cross attending to a bunch of stuff maybe? I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll give it a download. Moshi, a speech text foundation model for real-time dialogue. Uh, this wasn't posted to archive, I think, but everyone's talking about it. Uh, supposedly, it's like OpenAI's whole live talking thing, and apparently it's open source and works well. Um, very cool. I think for sake of relevancy and because this one actually works well, uh, there's a few papers in the past, the past few weeks that I've been trying to like read into that are about this whole idea of speaking out loud for the Transformer, and they were all only kind of partial steps the way there, but it sounds like this one actually works. Um, and I think I can actually download the code and everything for it. So I am going to download this one this week. Kind of wild. Usually I do not download papers that everyone else is downloading. Usually I'm very off the beaten path. But uh, this one, we'll give it a try. Should probably go and test it out to see if it actually works that well, but whatever. Plan 2.5 Coder Technical Report. Um, any one of these Quen papers, I really just open it up to see what the deal is with its actual architecture to see if anything changed interesting so they added in unique tokens um where the model is supposed to fill in the middle like fill in missing parts of code or like repo name as a token and a file separate token so you can put multiple files all into one context length this that's cool i like that i like that a lot as an idea because those those sound somewhat automated you could recognize any type of repo name um, and just replace it with that rather than actually constantly like, memorizing repo names. And the file separator token also makes a lot of sense when you're having multiple files in one context from a repo. Interesting. That's cool. I do like that. Other than that, it is a regular GPT, it seems, so I'm going to skip past it. Although I've heard it performs very well, but I'm not going to check that out. Here is the math version of Quen.5. I wonder if they do also just unique tokens. I don't see any discussion of architecture. All right, whatever. Dual layer training and decoding of large language model with simultaneous thinking and speaking. So simultaneously thinking and speaking reminds me of OpenAI's thinking and speaking one of the Moshi a few years ago. But I want to know what the whole dual layer training and decoding thing is. Motivated by the cognitive mechanisms in the natural world and designed a novel model architecture called 
task, which allows it to first consider the thoughts and then express the response based upon the query. Design several pipelines to annotate or generate the thought contents from prompt response samples. Then add language heads in a middle layer, which behaves as the thinking layer. Train the language model with the thoughts on the layer and successfully data and successfully let the thinking layer automatically generate reasonable thoughts. And finally, I put more reasonable responses. Ah, oh, it sounds similar to my whole letting LLMs think to themselves. I think I'm not going to actually like this one, but let's go ahead and download and check it out. LLMs plus persona plug equals personalized LLMs. Some of approaches previously involve fine tuning a unique personalized LLM for each user, which is too expensive for widespread application. Others introduce personalized information in a plug and play manner, like in the context. Novel personalized LLM model constructs a user specific embedding for each individual by modeling all their historical context through a lightweight plugin user embedder module. Attaching this embedding to the task input, LLMs can better understand and capture the user habits and preferences, thereby producing more personalized outputs. Yeah, you could also try out LORAS or, or REFT or, or something, but whatever. Human like effective cognition and foundation models. Humans easily infer emotions from situations or facial expressions, situations from emotions, and do a variety of other effective cognition. How adept are modern models at these inferences? Introduce an evaluation framework for testing the effective cognition and foundation models. Results show foundation models tend to agree with human intuitions, matching or exceeding interparticipant agreements. In some conditions, models are superhuman. They better predict model human judgments. They better predict modal human judgments than the average human. This suggests foundation models have acquired a human-like understanding of emotions and their influence on beliefs and behavior. Yeah, no surprised. Revealing the challenge of detecting character knowledge errors in LLM role-playing. This does not look like it's for me. Beyond closure models, learning chaotic systems via physics-informed neural operators. Long-term predictions of chaotic systems is difficult. Achieving such predictions typically requires Iterative computations over a dense spatial temporal grid to account for the unstable nature of chaotic systems, which is expensive and impractical in many real world situations. Alternative approach is using a coarse grid and then correcting its errors through a closure model, which approximates the overall information from fine scales not captured in the coarse grid simulation. Recently, ML approaches have been used for closure modeling, but they typically require a large number of training samples from expensive, fully resolved simulation. And this work could provide an even more fundamental limitation, i.e. the standard approach to learning closure models suffers from large approximation error for generic problems, no matter how large the model is, and it stems from the non-uniqueness of the mapping. Propose an alternative end-to-end -end learning approach using a physics-informed neural operator that overcomes the limitation by not using a closure model or a coarse grid solver. First train the Pinot model on data from a coarse grid solver, and then fine-tune it with a small amount of physics-based losses on a fine grid. Not for me. Sounds cool. When can LLMs actually correct their own mistakes? A critical survey of self-correction of LLMs. Categorize research questions and self-correction research and provide a checklist for designing appropriate experiments. Yeah, whatever. TabConnet. TabCanNet. Tabular data modeling with Kolmogorov, Arnold Network, and Transformer. Tabular data, super important, very common. Propose a method based on the TabCanNet architecture, which utilizes CANs, to encode numerical features and then merge them with categorical features, enabling unified modeling of tabular data on the transformer architecture. Model demonstrates outstanding performance in six widely used binary classification tasks, suggesting that TabCan has the potential to become a standard approach for tabular modeling, surpassing traditional neural networks. Furthermore, it reveals the significant advanced advantages of CANs in encoding numerical features. Interesting. I believe that. I believe it is a potential use of cans. I do think cans will just do different things from MLPs. That's what it looks like a bit. I'm not going to actually get into this, but looks cool. Large language monkeys. Scaling inference compute with repeated sampling. This sounds like a one preview. Stanford, Oxford, DeepMind. It is not the OpenAI paper. We observe that coverage, the fraction of problems solved by any attempt, scales with the number of samples over four orders of magnitude. Domains like coding formal proofs, where all answers can be automatically verified. These increases in coverage directly translate to improved performance. So it, this, yeah, this whole info, like this is the reason why um, O1 Preview is doing better at like math and coding, but not at like creative writing, is because this this idea, this method of just scaling up the actual number of inference attempts and finding correct attempts among those, uh, is only really works for verifiable uh questions. 
When we apply repeated sampling on SWE bench light, fraction of issues solved with deep seat V2 coder instruct increases from 15% with one sample to 56% with 250 samples, outperforming the single attempt state of the art of 43%, which uses more capable frontier models. Yeah. Moreover, using current API pricing, amplifying the cheaper deep seek model with five samples is more cost effective and solves more issues than paying premium for one sample from GPT 4.0 or Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Yeah. Relationship between coverage and number of samples is often log linear and can be modeled with an exponential exponentiated power law, suggesting the existence of inference time scaling laws. Yeah, this is one piece of the puzzle of O1 preview. My impression is that O1 preview does this to create training data and then trains off of that and then again does it during inference. I'm not quite sure about that. I think we're all still speculating about that. I have not actually read through their initial press release or the papers they cited, although I did read the papers forever ago, but I just don't remember very well. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and download this. Kolmogorov Arnold Transformer replaces MLP layers with cans. Three key challenges. First up is the base function. The standard B spline function used in CANS is not optimized for parallel computing on modern hardware, resulting in slower inference speeds. Second is parameter and computation inefficiency. CAN requires a unique function for each input output pair, making the computation extremely large. Third is weight initialization. Initialization of weights in CANS is particularly challenging due to the learnable activation functions, which are critical for achieving convergence in deep neural networks. We overcome the aforementioned challenges propose three key solutions. First up is a rational basis. We replace B-spline functions with rational functions to improve compatibility with modern GPUs. Um, second is group can. We share the activation weights through a group of neurons to reduce the computational load without sacrificing performance. Third is variance preserving initialization. Carefully initialize the activation weights to make sure that the activation variance is maintained across layers. With these designs, CAT scales effectively and readily outperforms traditional MLP-based transformers. Readily outperforms? Interesting. I'd be more than happy to test this out and replace an MLP in my template GPT thing and just see how it works. And I've been saying I'll be more curious about cans when they actually get used in like a real scenario. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. Rolling diffusion models. Increasingly being applied to temporal data like video, fluid mechanics, or climate data. Mo methods generally treat subsequent frames equally regarding the amount of noise in the diffusion process. The paper explores rolling diffusion, a new approach that uses a sliding window denoising process ensures the diffusion process progressively corrupts the through time by assigning more noise to frames that appear later in a sequence, reflecting greater uncertainty about the future as generation process unfolds. Empirically, we show that when temporal dynamics are complex, rolling diffusion is superior to standard diffusion. In particular, this result is demonstrated in a video prediction task using the Kinetic 600 video data set and a chaotic fluid dynamics forecasting experiments. Yeah, I'll download that. I'm, I like the idea. Self-incorrect. LLMs struggle with discriminating self-generated responses. Can LLMs consistently improve their previous outputs for better results? For this to be true, LLMs would need to be better at discriminating among previously generated alternatives than generating initial responses. Now that you phrase it that way, of course no. There was a survey on this actually earlier um, in this video today. From a unified framework that allows us to compare the generative and discriminative capability of any model on any task, Observe that models are not reliably better at discriminating among previous generated alternatives than generating initial responses. Yeah, that really makes sense. I'm fully convinced no more self-correction or self-discrimination, whatever it's called. Convergence of the denoising diffusion probabilistic models. Theoretically analyze the original version of the DDPMs presented back in 2020. Theorem states that the sequence constructed by the original DDPM sampling algorithm weakly converges to a given data distribution as the number of time steps goes to infinity under some asymptotic conditions over the on the parameters for variance schedule, yada yada yada. Improving the theorem, we reveal that the sampling sequence can be seen as an exponential integrator type approximation of a reverse time stochastic differential equation. Don't need to read, cool though. Looks like that is it for today. Cue outro. Don't leave yet. If you got this far, you're going to love this video or this playlist. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell, all the YouTube things. Join the Discord server. Follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn, and consider supporting me monthly either through Patreon or by hitting that YouTube join button down below. For as low as $1 per month, you can get early access to my videos. Or if you're a one-time payment kind of person, hit up my Venmo. And if you want to borrow my brain for a bit, consider booking a paid consultation video call. All of those links are over in my link tree. And uh, yeah, end of video.